request this evening. Um, Brother Jesse, you you had you said prayer last service, so you're gonna you're gonna have prayer again, my friend. Come on up here. <laughs> and God bless you. Let's bow. Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing us into your presence again tonight. And Lord, we want to come here from you. Move, move ourselves aside and move the speaker aside, Lord. And just speak to our hearts, Lord. Pray in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Yeah, why don't you turn around and shake hands with another, one another? He never promised that the cross would not get heavy. Um, he had B flat. B flat. Through the fire? Yes, through the fire. I said that wrong. You know what song it is. <laughs> we all know this song. Well, so many times I question certain circumstances or things that I could not understand. Many times a trial, weakness blurs my vision. Frustrations get so out of hand. It's then I am reminded. Never had to stand the test alone. Who has I look at all the victory? Spirit rises up in me. It's through the fire my weakness is. Just hold 
lucky to be here. I really am. I've been working so much, and it's so good to be here. Amen. Just very happy to be with you guys. <clears throat> well, I stand in awe within the presence of Amen. 
and God bless you. you may be seated for just a moment here tonight. God richly bless you. <clears throat> yes, amen. I'm glad we can sing that song in the past tense. Not he's coming back, he has come back. And he's made himself very clear amongst us. So we're thankful for that here tonight. I just want to make a quick announcement here before I turn the pulpit over to Brother, uh, to Brother Abraham. We've been, he's flew in on Monday, had a lot of good fellowship together. We asked some pretty hard questions, and I certainly enjoyed it very much so. And I appreciate our brother being able to sit down and just ask him some things and what the Lord has done in his life. If some of you don't know, if you would take the time, and if you want to get some inspiration, just go on the BCF website. And uh, Brother Abraham finished the last part of his testimony this time when he was there last weekend. So if you need a good spiritual faith lift, that'll be all the singing we'll just If you need a good spiritual faith lift, certainly welcome to go listen to some of those stories and some of those testimonies that, of the Lord working. The second uh, uh, announcement I want to make is that on the 19th to the 20th and 21st that weekend, the 19th, 20th, 21st, I think that's saying that right, or very close to it anyway. Uh, we're, uh, the church Sunday morning will be canceled here, but we'll be in Jasper. All right, Brother Daniel from Australia is going to come speak to us, but we'll not in church here. He will be camping that weekend in Jasper. Now, I want you to go see Brother Brent and Sister Alicia. They saw the place that we're going to go to, and that place we're going to go to has any kind of accommodations whether you need to rent a cabin or whether you need a motel or whether you need a tent or whether you want to, whatever, there's all kinds of options over there to be able to accommodate. Oh, the cabins are full? Okay. Okay. Anyway, so get a hold of Brother Brent and Sister Alicia here and get a hold of them for the contact information there. And it's also not far away from Jasper, so it's an easy drive as far as that goes. And Brother Daniel White from Australia and his family will be here with us that weekend. And he'll be speaking, having service over there at the, at the camp there at that time. So that would be all, I think. God richly bless you. God richly bless you. And we're thankful to have Brother Abraham come our way again. I enjoyed his spirit, enjoyed his, his, his uh, uh, you know, just what the Lord, how the Lord has trained every one of us a little bit different. And we're thankful that God has given us a wonderful variety of five-fold ministry and trained everybody different. And don't ever, put, don't ever try to make one person like the other one because God has trained us different. And the reason God has trained us different is because, because God loves you. He wants you to get a full scope, a full spectrum from one side all the way to the other side to have a balanced bride, because no matter how much, if you just listen to me, no matter how much I would try to be balanced, it wouldn't take long, uh, you'd find me, you'd find my spirit and be bent my way. And that's not what I want. I want us to be bent Christ's way so that we can enjoy complete spectrum that side, complete spectrum this side, so we could have a balanced bride and it's amazing, actually, when I think of how God has done that for us, to train everybody in a different perspective. So I want to say God bless you. I know it's always a lot of work coming in on Wednesday night, but it's how many times haven't you come in on Wednesday night, and it's been a lot of work, but when you walked away, you were just blessed. Just strictly blessed, just to be in it. And you can be on the Internet, and it's not as good. I understand sometimes the convenience and all that stuff, but there's nothing like being in the spirit of the presence of the Word of God as it unveils. And, and computers are no substitute for, for that anointing like that. So God bless you tonight, and I believe God will bless us tonight. And we're looking forward to seeing what the Lord has for us. Brother Abraham, if you would come, my friends. The pulpit is yours. Don't be nervous. God bless, God bless you. you. Yep. Yeah. Once more, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just so happy to come back again. I would say unfortunately, I had to come back again. 
because we have not yet gone in the rapture. <laughs> I expected that we would meet in the rapture, but um, we still have the hope that we are going to make it. And um, it's been a very refreshing time for me since Monday that I've been having with the family, yeah. uh, brother uh, Eugene, his dear wife, and normally you just have to love being around them. You just they, 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 they have the charm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. And um, I appreciate God. And like he said, we have been brought up differently. And of course, it patterns up and you begin to enjoy what fellowship is. So I bring greetings from Uganda. The saints sent their greetings and of course they are praying for us and they love you. <clears throat> and I believe like I requested the other time, you have also been praying for us yeah. because this journey, we need one another. Yeah. And um, as the days go close, closer to that hour, the more we need one another. And um, I thank God for Pastor Eugene that, yeah, this time again he decided that I should come here. I don't think because I have anything special. Uh, <clears throat> but I think I benefited more because I love fellowship and I was given the opportunity to have fellowship. A man with the saints. And um, we really appreciate the way God has been dealing with us so far. Because, you know, to keep yourself sober yeah. in this time. Yeah. To see things the way God wants you to see them is a very special gift. Yeah, amen. <clears throat> yeah, amen. Yeah, so I think as long as God is still with us and helping us to move on. To me, that's really an encouragement. Amen. So I look forward that one of these days we are going to make it home. Amen. Because it is becoming completely clear that we don't belong here. We don't fit anywhere. Amen. Everything that unfolds every day confirms that we are not set to be here. We are said to go home. <clears throat> so, yeah, and um, I'm normally not a good speaker at all. I just depend entirely on him. Maybe when I invite him to come and... Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, uh, I'm not at all, especially when you stand on this, such pulpits, you know, uh, where, you know, this is a a mature man of God in the ministry, and sometimes you say, what am I going to say? But anyhow, he knows. He knows all that you need, and maybe if I came just to put a little, a little nut somewhere, that would be very fine. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. I believe you are going to be praying for me. Uh, I would request that we stand up on our feet and we have a word of prayer. Certainly the saints that I've been with, they, they, they know Brother Eugene and his church, and you know, he's special everywhere. The saints in Washington, in, in, in West Palm Beach, in uh, St. Augustine, Beaufort, in Lima, Ohio, all these people sent their greetings to you, so I, I was going to forget that. So they sent their regards to you, and... We had a good time with them. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear loving Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this uh, evening. And the Lord, we know there is one comfort that, Lord, this ministry that we are handling and that, that we are in was never trusted with any man, but you came down yourself. And we are comfortable for that fact, the Lord, because you are involved you are going to make everything work out right according to your purpose. We just want to surrender entirely to your perfect will this evening. 
And I want to thank you that God, you pre preserved your children in the word hitherto by the blood and you watched over them and you've gathered them here this evening, even those who may be tuning in from different places around the world and around the region. I pray that God, your hand will be stretched forth even unto them and that God, your princes will reach forth to them and quicken us at this moment for you know how limited, how weak and tired and how Lord God, Lord, how <clears throat> I cannot do anything by myself. I'm just as, as mute and dumb as this mic until someone speaks through it. Yes, May you come, Lord Amen. God, and do the same, Lord God, and as I surrender to you, and you know exactly the needs of your children. Yes. And Lord, this is all that is all about. Amen. May you come down and meet their needs and yes, speak Lord. to us and encourage us by your word. For we dedicate ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Just had some scriptures that I wanted to read. And I think uh, some old scripture here in, in the book of um, <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 4. I know you have heard this scripture many times. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1. And then we shall be <clears throat> coming to the New Testament. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread yeah. and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away right. our reproach. <clears throat> and you come here... Um, In the book of uh, Colossians in the New Testament. Colossians chapter 1. <clears throat> I begin from verse 25 which, where Paul says, We are off. I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you. Now this was a dispensation given to Paul for the bride. Yeah. A special dispensation that he's talking about. And he says to fulfill the word of God. That is always the challenge of every age. We can hear the word. Yeah. We can believe the word. We can accept it, but to fulfill it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he comes down and he says, <clears throat> Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of, his, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. And he says, Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And that is the challenge. Present every man perfect in Christ, in Christ Jesus. Not perfect in the church, in the family, in the world, but perfect in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's a mystery. Paul is saying, to manifest that is a great mystery that has been kept from all ages right. for today. Right. And that mystery is only made possible by one thing, that Christ has to be in you. Amen. The hope of glory. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of the Lord. And this Christ, how does he come? I wanted us to come back here, just to one verse somewhere here in the, in the book of John. St. John, chapter 7. This whole chapter talks about Jesus speaking many things, and they sent soldiers to arrest him. But here, I want just to read um, verse 32. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, that is concerning Jesus, 
and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. They sent men to arrest him. And then here in verse 45, then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have you not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Amen. Then answered them, the Pharisees, Are you also deceived? May God bless his word and bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> No man spoke <clears throat> like this man. And in other words, they went to arrest Jesus. They have been sent. They are paid for it. They have the, uh, the, the armor. I mean, they have the swords, the spears. They have the training. And they failed to arrest Jesus. And then they go back and they ask him, them, why have you not brought the man? And they say, no man spoke like this man. Amen. In other words, what he spoke, disarmed us, arrested us before we could arrest him. Amen. And um, I'm talking about manifesting God's preserved character mystery in a dissolute age. It is time, I mean, manifesting God's preserved character mystery in a dissolute age. I know you know English better than me. English is not my language, it's your language. Now, the word dissolute means a condition where people enjoy immoral activities or behavior and they don't care about behaving in a morally acceptable manner or way. In other words, they are indifferent to moral restraints and given to immoral and improper conduct. They are like licentious, you know. They, are, they don't care. Yeah. So this is the age. It's a dissolute age. So dissolute that when you try to live what is right, you are appearing as if you are the one who is wrong. Right. Yeah. Because everybody else is wrong. Everybody else is living a perverted life. And then when you try to live the right life of the word, you appear like you are outlandish, strange. Amen. Something is wrong with you. As if you are crazy. Your mind doesn't work. So if you don't have a mystery in you that is going to show forth itself out, it's going to be very hard. But again, that's what we are here for. Amen. We have got a commission Amen. to manifest that character of God Amen. in this dissolute age. Yes. That's why Jesus did everything completely different from what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were. And that's why he was the target of their anger and their, you know, uh, envious pride, you know. They looked at this man, you know, like, you know, back home, I think around my place when we started the radio program, I, I was on the radio for five years and, you know, some of you have heard my testimony. And then many churches, over 20 churches were born. And some of these churches were already Pentecostal churches that just converted. And, and then what happened is around our church, about five churches were closed. You know, denominational churches, they lacked the people. They lacked the ability to stand. And then the whole thing is they begin to look at you. And one of them came to me with the question. He said, when it comes to the supernatural, even when we preach it more than you, we overemphasize the miraculous, but you have it more. And when it comes to preaching the word, we stand in no chance before you. What, is, what makes you so special? Right. Right. What is it that God put in you that we cannot manage? Right. Amen. He was so sincere. He wanted to know. 
And I told him, this is not something that I can explain. It's something that God has to reveal to you. But it comes when you receive the word of your day. <clears throat> yeah. Now, I want us to look at the people. If you look at, if you go back to the Bible and look at this man in the Old Testament, Joshua, I mean, Caleb. When, he, when, when, when God is speaking about Caleb in, in, in Numbers chapter 14, you'll find here in verse 20, after these people had murmured and complained, and they are saying they are going back to Egypt, and they are saying they cannot go continue with, them, with, with the, the, the journey. And then, you know, it's like God had told Moses, I'm going to wipe out all these people in a moment. I'm going to clear them. And then Moses is praying, Lord, pardon these people. So in verse 20, the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. Then he, but he says, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. 22. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land where, which I swear unto their fathers, neither uh, shall any of them that provoked me see it. Wow. But now look at this. It says in verse 24, but my servant Caleb. Yeah. Amen. Because he had another spirit with him. Yeah. Amen. Right. And he has followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land where into he went. Amen. Now, what are we talking about? This word we preach is a kingdom. And when you, you catch a revelation of this word, you have already entered into it. Yeah, right. You have spied into it. You have already seen the reality. And that's why when it strikes you, you say amen. Yeah. Because you actually see what other people can't see. Yeah, right. yeah. You connect to the theophany and then you see preaching simply reminds you what you know. That's why because you've bypassed the theophany, you forgot what you knew so preaching comes to connect you back to what you knew and you hear something familiar and by the preaching of the word and that's why you say amen yeah. and then when you say amen you have already you know propelled yourself into that realm that theophan powered realm you know where all things are possible and then when you go back to the kind of mind that you begin to bring in your intellectualism, like what is happening now, it's like God is saying, look, I've brought you into the land. Like Hebrews 6 says, it is impossible for those whose, whose eyes were once enlightened. Right. They have tested of the heavenly gift. You know, they have had all this evidence and then they backtrack. Right. And Paul says, we are not of them who... Go backwards. Amen. Amen. We are of them who go forward. <clears throat> now, there has to be another spirit yeah. wow. with you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What is that spirit? Because all these people had spirit. All these people were very good men. Noble. And that's why they chose them. They were reliable, they were good men. They feared God. But what is this another spirit? I didn't have this quote, I, didn't, I, 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 I don't have time, I, I have it, but I didn't bring it. Where the prophet says, God has to work on your spirit. Amen. Make it a little bit more gentle, right. more flexible. And more settled it down. He has to get you fixed up in your own spirit. Changes the nature of that spirit. Before he can bring down his spirit. So that his spirit can blend with that spirit. And that's when Romans comes in. Where he says the spirit. Your spirit has to agree with the Holy Spirit. That you are a child of God. You are a son of God. 
unless your spirit agrees with the Holy Spirit that you are a son of God, then there's going to be controversy. Even when the Holy Spirit comes and tells you that this promise is yours, your spirit will begin to resist. And that's where the problem is. So God has to get you fixed up. Like he, the prophet says, some of you are so mean that they cannot even get along with themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Let alone getting around, along with somebody else. Get along with even yourself. You have a problem. <laughs> you know, sometimes you find people quarreling with themselves. Even abusing themselves. They can't even get along with themselves, okay? So, now. So, that is exactly what was in Elisha. Because the Bible says, the spirit of Elijah rested on Elisha. And when the spirit of God, I mean Elijah, Elijah rested on Elijah, the Bible says the Pentecostals, those 50 sons of the prophets, recognized it and came down and bowed down and said, Behold, the yeah. spirit of Elijah now rests on Elisha. Yeah, 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 yeah. How does that spirit rest? Because there was a platform ready made for that spirit to rest. Elisha was already willing and asking for that spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay? Yeah. Now, the spirit, before it brings rest for you, it has to rest. You cannot expect the Holy Ghost to come and bring rest when he has not found rest. <clears throat> so he has to find where to rest. And that's, that, that takes us back. What, what do I mean? When you go to Genesis chapter 6, you'll find that the Bible says, God said, my spirit shall not strive with man. So he doesn't send his spirit where it's going to strive. As long as there is a struggle, a fighting, a striving, he goes away. Now the spirit of Elijah rested on Elisha, and that's why there was a double portion. Now today, he has to find again in the end time where the spirit of this end time Elijah rests. Yeah. Amen. And then where it rests, just like the spirit, the vision, the revelation that was in Moses rested upon Joshua, rested upon Elijah, I mean Caleb, because they had another spirit, another nature. They were not defiled, affected by all the mamas and all the negative words and all the statements that were going on by all the surrounding, all the unbelief. They stayed pure in their faith. Amen. And God is testifying, he says, in whom or with whom was another spirit? This servant of mine, Caleb, followed me wholly. Fully, because there is another spirit with him. Amen. A spirit of subjection. The unquestioning spirit of faith in the word. Amen. That spirit that settles in the truth and knows this is the truth. I'm not looking for anything else. Amen. That spirit that knows that God has everything set for me. Amen. And he knows all better for me. Amen. It's not going to be what I want him to do. But what he wants done. Amen. And I'm here subjecting myself to his yeah. perfect will. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, spirit yeah, yeah. of submissiveness to the word of God. Amen. No question. Yeah. That spirit that takes the word. And does not look at circumstances as anything. Yeah. That's why Caleb could not look at the giants. And he even yeah. gets scared because to him the word meant more than the giants. Yeah. The word that the promised land belongs to you yeah. by faith meant more than yeah. any encumbrance, any yeah. obstacle. Yeah. So that spirit that was in Caleb yeah. made him to follow God fully. Yeah. Now, yeah. Jesus Christ, the unmatched man, with the unmatched word for the unmatched bride. That's why he was the unmatched man. No man spoke like this man. Right. And we come in the end time. No man brought a message like William Branham. Amen. No man preached the message like this message. Yes. Amen. There's no other message. 
all these revivalists, all these great men that have preached around the world, evangelists with miracle signs and wonders, fine. But where is the message? There's no message like this message. Hallelujah. There's no truth like this truth. Amen. There was no word that was properly vindicated like this. Right. Once it is preached and you catch the revelation, you see that it's perfect. Amen. Now, this is unmatched. And because it's unmatched, we are the recipients of this unmatched revelation, unmatched mystery. Even the devil doesn't know it. Remember when the seven thunders were revealed, when the, the, the book of the seals was opened, the, 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 you know, the, the John was told not even to write it. He said, don't you write it, John. I've myself got a writing pad. I'm going to write it myself in their hearts by the iron pen and the devil will not even catch a hold of that. You'll not get that. Because if the devil was to get a hold of that, he would do great damage. Yeah. Amen. So now, we have got this unmatched, unknown, uncomparable revelation. Amen. It's just the fullness of Christ in us. Amen. Because what did the founders reveal? Christ. Sure. What is the seventh? The voice of God. What's the voice of God? Is the life. The prophet said that's the life. The, when the devil saw the life in Jesus, that is the thunder against the devil that the devil cannot stand. Amen. Yes. Now, this life of the word is the challenge of the hour. I want to read you some questions, some quote here. The prophet comes here in the message, investments. He says, now he had seen something in Jesus that he never saw in other men. He had saw his priests, seen his people. He had seen good men. But there was something special about Jesus Christ. They seen even the scribes and the soldiers that were sent. And from the temple to arrest him, they said, never a man spoke like this. He not only spoke as a priest or a layman, God backed up what he said. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Listen, he, re- he never wrote no books. We don't have anything that Jesus ever written in his life. Only thing we know, he wrote one time on the sand <laughs> when a little lady in an ill family was brought to him and, and he harassed that back out. Why didn't he write? He was the word. Amen. Amen. The word cannot write. It is already written. <laughs> he was the word. So he comes up and says, why didn't he write? He was the word. And um, uh, he says he was the word. He was the living proof that there is a living God. The living proof for the living God. His very life within him. Okay? Now, that's why these people came up and said, no man spoke like this man. Amen. When he speaks, he has got the confidence. Yeah, right. Amen. Right. Let's go back to where we read in Isaiah 4. Seven women shall get a hold of one man. Yeah. And shall say, we shall take care of all our needs. But just, we want your name. Of course, that would speak about the end time, what is happening. But it may not literally, sometimes physically be happening. But this was speaking about the seven churches. Yeah. Yeah. Seven church ages that would come and just take the name of Jesus. We are a church. We are Christians. Attached to the name, but no character. Attached to the name, but no life. Yeah. We will do our own things. But we want only to have an attachment yeah, right. to your name. To your name. Yeah. Yeah. And Brother Balaam speaks about Jezebel as a type of the end time church. And of course, that's what the Bible speaks in Revelation, that woman Jezebel. But it's interesting if you find out what the name Jezebel means. Jezebel means 
the unmarried one. And actually Jezebel just targeted the position of Ahab to use the authority of the position. That's right. But she never submitted herself to the leadership. She never got married to authority where she can be led. And Jezebel types also these seven women, seven church ages that just got attached to the name of Jesus but cannot be controlled. Yeah, right. Jesus is not their Lord. Yeah. They just want the name. Yeah. And when you come today, you'll find that also within the message fraternity, we have those who want to be attached to the name of the message. Yeah. The name of William Branham. But where is the character of the message and the yeah. mystery? This is the challenge. Yeah. The unmarried one, the unmarried married one. Okay? That's Jezebel. You go and find Jezebel. It means unmarried. Yeah. And that's what she was. She was the boss. She, actually, the 400 prophets whom Elijah killed by, you know, they were feeding at Jezebel's table, yeah. not Ahab's table. It was Jezebel who had the table. It was Jezebel who was their priestess, connecting them to that sun god, Baal. Yeah. Jezebel had the say, even when the next day after uh, Elijah had called fire from heaven and so forth, it was Jezebel who sent the orders and told Elijah, so do the gods do to me tomorrow if by this time your head will be upon your body. Yeah. She threatened. When Ahab had failed to do anything to Elijah, it is Jezebel who had the say. It is Jezebel who grabbed Naboth's vineyard. When Ahab spoke to Naboth, Naboth said, no, I cannot give you my father's inheritance. But then when he went back home, sad, this woman said, come on, do you know the position you have? Exactly. You, you are sad because of a, a subject that is in your kingdom? You cry, you fail really because he has refused to give you land? Because he has refused to sell it, you ought to, ex to exchange it with you. I will give it to you. If you don't know the, the authority and the power of your position, I know it. I, I, I came there for that. So you sit down there. I'm going to do it for you. In other words, these are people who use the name to get what they want. Yeah. But not... They are not subjecting themselves under the authority of the name. Yeah, that's true. Now the whole thing is Christ over you, not Christ in you. Christ by name, Christian. Nominal Christianity and all these other historicals and so forth. And then you come today, I believe that the message, the message, the message, that is going on, but we have gone to find out that the message is not just saying it in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Christ sent Malachi 4 to prepare a bride. Amen. There must be a bride for Jesus Christ. Amen. That's all this, that's, that's all that it was meant for. Not just Claiming, holding on the name of Jesus. Holding on the name. So that's why there is supposed to be a mystery in this church, in this bride. And that, that will never have to manifest this character. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Character that has been preserved for this day. Amen. And you have to have the revelation and the boldness to do it. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, and that boldness comes by inspiration, and inspiration comes 
by that inborn revelation that it's not me. Let me die and let him live. So the the one in me lives and I die. But if you want to live alongside with him, it can't work. He has to, you have to die, he has to live. Yeah. Now, you come here and look at how Paul made a resolute, a resolute determination. I mean, a confession that was resolute within a dissolute age. When you come to the book of Romans, Paul is saying here in Romans chapter 1, verse 15, he says, so, as much as is as much as is, sorry, as much as in me is, depending on what substance has filled me, mm-hmm. he says, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. In other words, It was not going to be an easy thing to preach the gospel to Rome. By just intellect, by just self-will, by just interest, but by that which is in me. Amen. Amen. Why? To preach the gospel to those that are in Rome also. There was a problem in Rome. And then he brings verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Mm. Now, why does he bring the word, I'm not ashamed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To go with that gospel to Rome, Mm -hmm. if you don't have some substance filled you, if Christ is not in you, that, that hidden bride character mystery, that is just going to unvo- unveil itself like a flower, the blossoming of a flower, yeah. you are not going to manage it. Mm-hmm. And I want to draw your attention, friends, that there is a reason why Paul was saying, I must preach the gospel to Rome also. You first of all go to what they say. That once in Rome, do as the Romans do. (laughs) Don't try to change them. You change yourself to fit them. You get that? That is the, the culture. That is the nature of the Romans. Don't try to change them. Change yourself to fit them. And then they say, all roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to Rome. All churches are heading towards the beast control. And then once in that system, don't try to live different. Be like them. And then we see the religious system coming, engulfing the whole world. And we see this artificial copy and paste, artificial religious spirit that makes you just act religious. We don't see the determination, the seriousness in prayer and devotion and dedication and seeking God and studying the message and waiting upon God. We don't think about even the rapture these days anymore. We don't, you know, we don't, you know, consider whether we have the Holy Spirit or not. It's like we are taking things for granted. Some kind of nominal Christianity. It is just this outside breeze of death coming over to the church. Because we are in a Roman system. What was in this Roman system? Don't change us. Adjust and change yourself to fit us. And then what was there also? You find that in the New Testament, this is the only place Paul writes attacking the demon of his homosexuality and lesbianism. It was here. That same chapter. And what was the problem? In verse 18, he says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. And then, ungodliness and unrighteousness. This is lack of faith. (laughs) Of them who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Can you imagine that? This is now the spirit holding the truth 
you have the truth in the hands. Yeah. You hold it. Yeah. But in an unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? Lack of faith. And dealing with the unbelief of believers is the worst disease. You believe, but you don't believe what you claim to believe. Just like today we have people who say they believe the message, and then they turn around and question the very same message, question the same prophet, question, raise up these issues and so forth. I was talking to a brother. I said, we are not sincere. We believe John the Baptist to be a prophet. Because he's in the Bible. Yet John the Baptist never performed one miracle. Not even a single one. And we believe him to be a prophet. And he introduced Jesus. And then we come and question the the minister of William Branham with millions and hundreds of thousands of signs and vindications. And people begin to come up with, you know, scientific examination. He said this. And then they forget what Jesus said. When they asked Jesus, they said, who gave you this authority? By what authority do you do these things? And Jesus didn't tell them the source of the authority. He said, I will also ask you the same question. Another question. The baptism of John the Baptist. Was it from heaven or of men? Right, right. Got it. Why? That's it. That's it. Right there. I said, well, if we say it's from heaven... He will say, why didn't you believe him? Exactly. If we say it was of men, yeah. we fear the men, they can stone us, because the Bible says all the men held John as a prophet. Yeah. And in the same chapter, they wanted to send people to arrest Jesus, but they feared because all men took Jesus for a prophet. Now, in other words, the Jews took Jesus as a prophet, yeah. took John as a prophet, yeah. but Jesus is trying to tell them, if you knew what was the purpose of John the Baptist, you would not have asked me what authority I'm using. You only took John the Baptist as a prophet. But you forget that he was more than a prophet. Amen. That's what he declares in Matthew 11. He says, you went to the wilderness to see what? A reed shaken by the wind? No. A man clothed in soft raiment? No. We want to see a prophet? Yes. And I want to tell you he was more than a prophet. Why does he use the word more than a prophet? He was not just a prophet. He was a messenger. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. What was the message of John? Behold the Lamb of God. Amen. That takes away the sin of the world. He connected prophecy with reality. Now, Brother Branham is not just a prophet. They are looking at the prophet. He he said this, but he did this. He fulfilled. He did this. He said this. As a man, he has a mistake. I see this. But he was more than... The prophetic gift was just a sign. But there was a voice of the sign. And the voice of the sign was the message. Now, instead of taking the message, the problem that people are beginning to look at the prophet instead of the message is because they have failed to receive and to become the word. To become the message. And to become what that word is. And to produce the character of the bride. So when you fail to produce the character, you begin to believe to question the source. And yet there has never been a prophet which is perfect. God takes the man, uses him, places there a gift, and he leaves there weakness. There are some weaknesses to blind in some people. Moses had weaknesses, Abraham had weaknesses. All these people have had weaknesses. And God left them there. What are we talking about? This one was more than a prophet. He was the son of man ministry. You see? And then what comes? He brought the message. This message which is supposed to produce character. Because that's what bride is all about. It's character. You cannot talk about the bride when there is no character. Let me get something here. 
Because the prophet comes here in a message. Look away to Jesus. He says, and now, on persons like ourselves. He says, we are going to be cut out of all that altogether. <clears throat> okay, he comes down and he says, um, now, we are closer than it seems to be. I don't know when, but it's real, real close. I may, building a, I may be building a platform some, for somebody else to step on. I may be taken before that time. I don't know. And that time may be this coming week that the Holy Spirit will come and bring Jesus Christ. He may come this next week. He may come yet tonight. I don't know when he will come. He doesn't tell us that. But I do believe that we are so close that I would never die, maybe with old age. Then he comes down and says, I may not do it, that is, see him physically, but this message will introduce Jesus Christ to the world. Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus Christ introduced to the world is not the rapture. Because in the rapture, he comes as a thief. How will, they, how will that introduce him to the world? This message will introduce Jesus Christ to the world. Now, that, that's the main essence, the main thing of the message. To bring Jesus Christ again as Omega. That Omega manifestation to the world. The bride voice ministry. <coughs> Where the world... <coughs> Ceases to see you, but sees Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> That's what is the main purpose of this message. To introduce again Jesus Christ to the world. Amen. And then, for as John the Baptist was for, sent to forerun the first coming, so is the message to forerun the second coming. He talks about John the Baptist. And I want you to look at one thing. John the Baptist, you help me with this. He introduced Jesus to the world. And yet Jesus comes and says, of all that are born of women, there's no one greater than John. John was greater than them all, including Moses, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all those men. Because with them they prophesied, but here he has come and connected the prophets with reality. Amen. But he says something again in the same verse, says, not withstanding or nevertheless, the least, he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Why? John is greater than of all that were born of women, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Amen. Why? That means John was not in this word kingdom. And what is the problem? He introduced Christ, he introduced the word, he introduced the New Testament, he introduced Christianity, and he never became a Christian. Yes. Because when he was going to baptize Jesus, He said, how do you come to me? I need you to baptize me and you've come to me. Jesus said, yes, suffer it to be so. Because in so doing, we fulfill all righteousness. Amen. So he baptized Jesus. But he never again told Jesus to baptize him. Amen. So because he was not baptized by Jesus, he never became a Christian. And there are four you that received Jesus. And that's why you see some of his disciples, two of them went to Jesus, they were baptized, they became Christians. And we find a bunch of other Baptists in Acts 19 being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They became Christians. But John the Baptist didn't. 
And because he was not fully identified with the word of the day, he believed it, he received it, he proclaimed it, he introduced it, he told the people this is the truth, but he never stepped into it. You find that there was a vulnerability that he even doubted later on. He sent people, go and ask him, are you the one really? Or oh, I made a mistake. And that's why you are seeing people who preached this message years and believed it and proclaimed it. Turn around and say, is it the truth? Oh, should we look for something else? Boy, that is the truth. Why? They received it. They believed it. They proclaimed it. But it never came into them. It never became life. And that's why they wiki you, who is not the greater preacher that you used to respect, become greater. Because you still know this is the truth. And that's why the challenge is, it's not just to believe the message, it's just not to know the truth, this is the truth. Not just to tell the others that that's what John did. That's John, that John declared. But he never took that step of full identification with the word. And you go back in the Old Testament, you'll find that there was that mountain in, 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 in Exodus chapter 20. And the Bible says every animal, every person who was to go near to that mountain was to be killed. Because that was the mountain where God was on. It was on fire and lightning and thundering and fires. And everybody kept a distance. But Moses was climbing that mountain because he was the prophet. Now listen, Joshua also climbed that mountain. And he never died. Amen. And there was no sacrifice. Why, why, why didn't Joshua die? While others are dying, he doesn't die. While others are forbidden to enter, to climb the mountain, for him he can climb and come down and climb and go, and he didn't have any problem. Why? He was more, more fully identified with the prophet. And let me say this, the atonement was in that prophetic ministry. That was the atonement of the hour. And that's why you find that today people are talking about grace. Fine, there is grace. But where is grace? Grace is in the word. Because the lamb took the book, opened the book with bloody bloody hands and the blood went into the pages of the book and here he descends down and then the, angel, the, the voice tells John go to that angel with the book and say give me the book and then eat the book eat that book which is bloody yeah. blood is life so you are going to eat the book. We have seen your name there. You know the promises that belong to you. You know what God is expecting you to be, what is expected of you. And then now you are laying the claim of that to be manifested in you. And that's now the grace. That's the perfection. Amen. That the devil doesn't want us to strike. Yeah. He wants us to be on the peripheries, on the sidelines. And just say, I'm a message believer, I'm a message believer. But where is the character? And manifesting the character, you need the boldness that Paul had. I must preach the gospel to Rome also. I must dress as a bride in this naked generation also. I'm not part of Laodicea, and I'm not going to be ashamed of the dressing of the bride. I'm not going to be ashamed of the speech of the bride. I'm not going to be ashamed of the gospel. I'm not going to be ashamed of carrying the message book. I'm not going to be ashamed of holding my Bible. Do you know we have become more smarter these days? We carry laptops, of course. The Bible is there. But no one will know that you... You are reading a Bible when you are on a laptop, maybe. So it becomes more smarter now. You don't want to be carrying, seeing maybe carrying a Bible. It's also a trial now. 
It's a smarter age. So, seven women. How many churches today are attached to the name of the message? How many believers today are attached to the name? We shall only take your name. The rest we shall do as we want. We shall talk like we want, dress like we want, but we attach ourselves to that name to save, save us from the reproach. We are unmarried like Jezebel. Yeah. But we just take the name. Yeah. Take the name. We don't want to be under control. And you know, these people are scared of this, you know, sharp level, you know, like gun barrel sharpness of the message. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the order of the message. <laughs> it's too strict. It's too restrictive. It's too, it leaves you with no space. Everything is bad. Everything. How do you enjoy life? Come on, I'm a younger girl rising up. I'm a younger boy. How do I move around? Everybody's saying, how? Come on, your religion is only fashioned. Come on. Update your application. This is where the problem is. It is an age of everything. It's super. And the prophet here in the message, the super sign, he says, brother, sister, we are living in the days of supermarkets, super jets, super highways, super races. Everything else is super. And he says, and there is a super sign. We have had the, relig- the sign of religions. We have had the signs of revivals. We have had the sign of getting together. We have had the sign of speaking in tongues. We have had the sign of healing the sick. We have had all these signs. But here we find the Bible. But the last sign before the promised son arrives was a super sign. Amen. And says, he comes down and says, I declare to you, Tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, it is now on earth, the super sign. What is that? Not only that, but it's right here among us tonight. The Holy Spirit, God is super sign, the resurrected Jesus Christ. It cannot fail. It's an internal sign. It can never be changed. Amen. Heavens and earth will pass away, but that will never change. It is an internal everlasting sign. What is that? God manifested in human flesh. Hallelujah. God made himself known in human flesh. Amen. That is the super sign. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says, as much as is in me, I will use the mystery of that which has filled me to manifest this testimony to Rome also. Where they say for us we can't change. Even when they can't change, let me live the the life of the mystery that lays in me. I'm not going to be ashamed of what I am because my identity is Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me ask you a question. If you are going to put a photo on your passport, do they take your 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 shoulders because you are muscular? Or you are you, you are you are chest? They take your Yes. Yeah. Amen. Only this. And what is your head? Jesus Christ. Amen. The head of the church is Jesus. Amen. And that is your identification. Amen. 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 <laughs> That's what they put on your passport. The head, not the leg. Amen. Amen. Not the muscles, not the chest. Now, what is your identification? Right. Heaven's doors will open for me. Yeah. When the saints go marching, they will see the face of Jesus. Amen. They will not see you. Right. They don't know you. Amen. But when they see that headship of Christ on you, automatically. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why, Brother Branham, to bring this mystery that we are talking about, that we are preaching about, to bring this mystery of life. That changes, that transforms us to be the bride. The power of God to put the people into the bride. This mystery, he had to be caught up and, you know, be caught up into the constellation of seven angels 
And that's why the devil is attacking that cloud. Because, you know, that cloud means many things. It was not just seven, seven angels. You know? It was the head of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay? And that's actually what literally Brother Branham was lifted up to put on. Seven angels, that is tying the seven, seven church age messages, loose ends together. And then put that together is the full, full picture of the headship of Christ. Amen. And then he came down with the headship of Christ and then it was that white wig. And the prophet calls it the sign of maturity, experience and what? Justice, you know, as a judge. And then after preaching the seven seals, 1963 in March, he comes in July, on 7th July, 1963, he preaches the message, indictment. And he says, now I indict this generation. Yes. That's right. Praise the Lord. I indict this generation by virtue of the word of Christ, the unveiled reality that the bride, the church has been waiting for. Now I indict this generation. Now I have, I bring a case against this generation. If they don't take that. Right. right. So this generation is indicted. And who indicted it? William Branham. Who was William Branham? The son of man. And let me tell you, Ezekiel 37, what happened? The, the, the prophet, a son of man, and the voice said, son of man, he, he was lifted up and brought in the valley of dry bones. He said, son of man, can these bones live? He said, God, you know. He said, no, it's you. It's you. Prophesy. Amen. And he spoke and the bones came together and the sinews and ligaments and so forth and the flesh and there was no life. And God said, you can give them life. Prophesy again. Amen. Now, what does that mean? The son of man ministry. Amen. When you are brought under it, no matter what condition it is, you are in that son of man ministry can create you back, can restore Hallelujah. you back, Hallelujah. can restore your health, can restore your spiritual image, can restore everything that you have lost the joy of salvation, the peace, the victory. Just be there Hallelujah. under the son of the son of man ministry. And I was talking to the pastor. I said, you see, that's why Jesus said, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith? Because it's the son of man ministry that restored that faith in William Branham. The minister of William Branham restored the faith of the church back to the Pentecostals. Okay? Now he comes again as the son of man. That son of man, Christ, comes to check on the very faith he restored. Amen. Shall he find the faith he restored? Amen. This is the son of man coming, and it was the son of man that preached the restoration of that faith. So he's coming. Shall he find the faith he restored? Amen. Shall he find the character he told? Shall he find the church with that same character in this dissolute age, perverted? God is Eden in the middle of Satan is Eden. Yeah. Is it possible to speak the truth? When everybody is a liar, is it possible to be, you know, to, to, to be a man, a woman of integrity when everybody is corrupted? Is it possible to love your wife and be faithful to her alone when men are picking up and dropping women like nothing every day? Is it possible to be a lovely, obedient, young child, girl, boy that obeys your parents when you are surrounded by this bunch of, deli you know, delinquents, you know? Juvenile delinquents that are just going on drugs and so forth. Is it possible to grow up a virgin in this nation of America and Canada and still go to marry when you are still a virgin? Is it possible? Why not? What is happening? Where is the character of the world? Yeah, right. That's why William Branham, you see, when he was preaching marriage and divorce, God told him, he said, Go and tell the people I've pardoned this past, but let them tell the younger ones. To grow with purity. Yeah, Amen. God demands character. Amen. He says, this is the super sign. In other words, when you manifest this, you are now beyond, above 
all the gravity, all the forces of darkness, you are beyond the devil's grasp. This is the final super sign. And what is it? God. That is the word. Manifested in human flesh. Human flesh, yours, not the other ones. Don't look over the shoulder. Nobody else but you. Because you are the one who is hearing this word. God he made himself known in human flesh. Made himself known. He says, do you believe that to be the truth? Glory be to God. Mm-hmm. I wish I was a preacher, a good one. Maybe I will continue preaching. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay. So he says, he says in the message, the seed is not here with the shark. He says, notice, and in the Pentecostal age, through the Lutheran age, through the Wesleyan age, it has been the same thing through this Pentecostal age. Now notice, but at the opening of the seven seals, Revelation 10, the full word is to be bound into manifestation again. Exactly right. Is to be bound into full manifestation again. In the same way, at the opening of the seven seals. Have they been opened? Amen. Yes. Amen. What is remaining? The full word to be bound in full manifestation. The same way. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And that's why the prophet comes here in the message, God is provided away. He says, brother, what we need is an all-time Holy God, God, I mean, Holy Ghost sent power. Amen. Power of God to straighten up the church and get her back into the ring, back into the fighting ring again Amen. and to fight them devils like we never fought before. Amen. We have to fight. We have to be brought back into the ring. He says, God help these preachers. Um, I ain't talking about this. He's talking about Pentecostals hanging along with these little old kitty gloves on, afraid they are going to hurt somebody's feelings. Boy, boy, boy. I would rather hurt every man in the world and be in friendship with God. Tell the truth and God will honor it. Amen. You see, he comes here and says, what good is the stones if you haven't got a stone mason to shape them? <laughs> what, is, what good are message believers if we don't get a stone mason to shape us into Amen. the bride? Amen. <laughs> okay? He says, what good is the stone if you haven't got a true stone mason with a good sharp tool to shape him into the fitting place in the house of God? Jesus counts character, not members. Amen. This is the message, end time evangelism. Jesus counts character, not members. And we count members, isn't it? But Jesus counts character. Amen. Can he count some character in your home? In your life? Jesus counts character, not members. You know that? He counts character. God has always tried to get one man in his hand. That is all he needs is one man that will do his work. Through the years, just think, he could only find one righteous man in the time of Noah, in the time of Moses. You see, like that. I have to finish up. He says here, not, now notice the message you believe from the heart. If you notice a man known by his character, known by his works, if we th would think of God, of how God shows his character, is by his works. He's got his own character. And he wants his character known. Not American, African, mm -hmm. Canadian character. This is our culture. Yeah. This is how we do things. Yeah. No. He wants his character to introduce him to the world. 
It says a man's work declares his character, and Christ was God's work. And Christ de declared God's character, his feeling for the sick, his longing for saving of souls, till he even gave his own life. God's work. God's character was declared in Christ. Listen, and if you can just empty your own intellectual thoughts out and give God the right of way mm -hmm. so that he can declare his character through the work of your yielding, there's only one work you are going to do, yielding. Amen. Surrendering. Brother, we need him now more than ever Amen. before. Amen. Everything else is crumbling. Amen. We need him. Amen. So there is only one work you are going to do. You have arrived. You are in the right place. You need to do one work. Yield. Amen. Surrender to him. Amen. So that his character is declared. You see? If we can just empty your own intellectual thoughts out and give God the right of way, he can declare his character through your work of yielding. Empty out, get the world, and get all your doubts out of the way. This is what God wants. And he comes here. This is what challenges me <clears throat> so much. He says... He says, you can come before it's too late, says the Lord. And buy of me gold tried in fire. And then you'll be truly rich. Are we getting it? Listen to me. Naked physically. We came into the world, but naked spiritually, we should not leave it. Yeah. We should be dressed in his garment of righteousness. Amen. And he says, oh no, we are going to take something with us. What is that something? All that we can take with us, nothing less, nothing more. So we had better be real careful now to see that we take something that will make us right before God. Amen. So then, what will we take with us? There's only one thing you have to take with you. We will take our character, brother. That is Laodicean church age. We will take our character, brother. That is what we will take with us. Now, what kind of character will you take with you? Not yours. Not your churches. Not your pastors. Not your husbands or wives. It will be his whose character was molded by suffering in the fiery furnace of affliction. It can't be the softness of this characterless Laodicean people. Yeah, now he says, it is up to each one of us. For in that day, every man will bear his own burden. Yeah. What will be the burden? The burden of failing to present the character. But when you have the character, you have no burden. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So what are we looking at? Paul is saying, I must. And when you come to Ephesians, he says, according as he predestinated us, you know, he, he speaks about, he says, blessed be the Father, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly presence in Christ Jesus, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. Amen. That is what predestination is all about. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. You can be blamed by thousands of people here. But as long as he doesn't blame you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I want to tell you one thing. If you have his character, you'll be blamed here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to stand blameless before him. Amen. Amen. 
That is the challenge. Not just a name attachment. Not just being unmarried in marriage. Any Christian in Christianity. Like the prophet says, chachanity. Just having a chachanity. Time has come. It's not just our feet to take us to heaven. It's not our effort. It's not our understanding. It is not our ability. It's not our money. It's not our intellect. It's not our frame. It's going to be the character of Christ. That's what's going to be attracted to that magnet. Because it attracts that which is of the same material. And the the prophet said, the prophet said, Jesus never came to redeem you. He came to redeem a part of himself. Amen. Hallelujah. He placed a part of himself here so that it would pull him to come and just redeem a part of himself. Amen. And how do you prove that you are a part of himself? By presenting that character. And yet in a dissolute age, when everything is going this side, you are this. And the prophet sums it up. He says, it is an age of apostasy, but it's also an age of perfection. Amen. So there are two circles running. Apostasy and perfection. And perfection is just his reflection, Amen. his life, his character. And brother Eugene will agree with me that there is no preacher who will now come from anywhere and preach anything apart from that. Yeah. The word being flesh. Amen. That's just around that now. And we are preaching. Every preacher will come and preach the same thing. Why? I was telling Brother Chad, I said, this is the time of the harmonizing Amen. of the seven rams. I mean horns. I mean trumpets. The seven priests blew. Until they are blowing became one voice. Amen. And then the walls of Jericho fell down. So it is the harmonization of the voices. The seven, the fivefold ministry, everywhere, the whole world. It is focusing on one thing. Christ in you, Amen. the hope of glory. Amen. There's nothing. Because that's what perfection is. Yeah, that's it. And I talked about how that in 1963 pronounced indictment. Now, when you pronounce indictment, you must get witnesses. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all this time, God has been looking for witnesses. And the witnesses themselves by be, must be judged. And that's why you come here mm -hmm. and God is judgment seat right. here. The church is the judgment here. Because all of us have to pass, to, have to stand before God for judgment. But the difference is when and where. Yeah. The world will be judged on that day. Yeah. The sinners. Right. For us, we are being judged now. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Judgment of God begins in the house of God. Yeah. Here. Yeah. And when you surrender, say, Lord, I'm ready. Let all the unbelief in me be judged. I am on the side of you. I stand with you. All the unbelief, all the doubt, all the rigidity. All the intransigence, all the complications, all the intellectuals, intellectualism that I want to come with, judge it. And I was telling somewhere, I think I was telling the friends, I said, if all these demons are judged out of us, because sometimes we are, we are unfair to God. We tell God to judge the demon of cancer, leukemia. Pressure, diabetes, and all these other diseases because they bring pain. What about that demon of lying? Yeah. What about pride? Yeah. What about unbelief? What about doubt? What, out of, what about this demon of stubbornness? Yeah. Disobedience? Yeah. Why don't we surrender them for judgment? And you stand on the side of God and say, judge this. Because once these ones are judged, the devil will have no, no, no ground in us to bring these other curses. Yeah. But sometimes we are unfair. We tell God to judge the other demons. And yet we are holding these ones back. Yeah. 
And there are these ones that actually cancer doesn't spoil your character. It only kills your body. You know? Diabetes doesn't spoil your character. But now you are, are choosing, you are presenting these demons that don't spoil character to be judged. But these ones that destroy character are remaining. And you are being unfair to yourself and unfair to the blood, to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. If we can say, Lord, I yield, I surrender all of this. I'd rather not get hailed today physically, but I want these demons to be judged. All these weaknesses in me, all these spirits in me. Then even these other ones will disappear automatically. You will not even know when they went. Because which came first? It was sin, not disease. Disease is just a fruit. A curse that came upon sin. But in most cases, we want disease to go. It's the thing we hate most. But we forget that disease came after sin. So this, this nature here of sin has to die. And once it dies, this demon will have nothing to feast on. And it will have nothing to claim. It spreads its own, basing on what? So this is the challenge, friends. And I'm just winding up by saying, it's a challenge. It's up to you. It's up to me. Yeah. It's a dissolute age, yes. It's a dissolute society around us. But where is Christ's character? We believe the message, thank you. We have come this far, thank you. But let us not just attach ourselves to the name of the message. Like those seven women, we will take your name, but we will take care of ourselves. They don't say, we will get married to you. No, they don't mention marriage. Just take, they accept us to take your name. Jezebel, the unmarried one. We want to be married to the word. And when you are married to the word, you are the word bride. And you manifest that character of the word. May God bless you. Amen. Let's stand up. Oh, hallelujah. With our heads bowed and thinking about this, I feel challenged, friends. And it's like many times we say, if the Lord tarry, we are actually unfair to him because he doesn't tarry. We are the ones who are tarrying. He's already here. He has descended. He's waiting for us to come in line, to come to that perfection. And the only work we have to do is to yield, to surrender. Maybe if you want to be remembered in prayer and say, Lord, I surrender to you this day, just stretch forth your hand up and we pray together. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for this evening. For yes, Lord. <clears throat> The opportunity you have given us to be in your house and to share your word together. It's a challenge to us because we are the people. There's no other people in this world, in any other generation, that have had the kind of preaching and mysteries and revelations right. that we have had. And how many good sermons have we had, Lord? But Lord, yet we keep struggling on, trying to just keep ourselves afloat in Christianity. Lord, help us to die out and Lord, we just present these spirits, these weaknesses, these disobedient demons of unbelief and doubt and Lord, all these other weaknesses in us. May you judge them, Lord, in the house of the Lord today and Lord, may they, Lord, be overcome and Come down, Lord, and visit us and help us, Lord, for there is a, supposed to be a super sign in this hour, a super sign that the devil will have nothing to do with, that the devil will be, Lord God, so far away, will just look up because it's beyond his reach. It's a super sign because it is having a super mystery, and the super mystery is Christ in us, that thunder that shakes the devil. Lord, I'm praying the Lord God will be merciful and 
visit us, Lord, in a special way. Lord, visit each soul here, every believer, every sister, every brother, all the ministers here, the deacons, the pastor, Lord God. Help us, Father, for we are the people in this hour. We, we, we cannot pretend that, Lord, we don't know it. We, we just, Lord God, we want to confess our foolishness, our, our weaknesses, our, Lord God, inconsistencies. Lord, help us, Lord, and channel us, Lord God, into your will tonight. And let the power of the Holy Spirit freely move in our midst, in our hearts, Lord, and transform us into the image of your dear Son. Lord, may we move away from just attaching ourselves to the name of the message, the name of Lord God, the messenger, the name of Jesus Christ, and be the reality that you purpose, Lord God, as the cream, as the end result of why you sent Malachi for. Thank you, Father. I commit everybody into your hands and myself and the pastor here into your hands, Lord. Have mass upon us as we surrender ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. tonight I appreciate you know the more as time goes on I'm realizing that God God really isn't coming for me he's just coming for the part of himself that's in me Amen. he's got no interest in making your flesh better or no interest in anything as far as you're concerned but the little bit that God put inside of us that little bit is what God's interested in growing because he's coming for himself and if you put part of him himself inside of me, then he's coming for what's part of me. And that is just such a unique revelation. You can forgive yourself then when you mess up, but you can be really thankful God is in your life. Amen. That he can direct you knowing that God just coming for the part of us, uh, for himself that's inside of us. That's what he's going to quicken. Let's just end this course tonight as we're dismissed. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the firing line. Nights are dark and cold. You know, in sadness, you're my laughter that shadows all my fears when I'm all alone and is there hope Jesus you're the center that's my joy you know all that's good from you well you're the hope of my salvation over all I do Jesus you're the center of my
my joy. Just once more as you're dismissed this evening. You know, Jesus, you're the center. That's my joy. You know that all good and perfect. God bless you tonight. God richly bless you. Amen.